So this morning, uh, uh, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Acts uh, chapter 27. Uh, the title of my message is Be God's Man for This Season. You know, we as a nation, as individuals, we go through different seasons in our life. And in every season, you know, God wants to move through us. Um, you know, I can remember, you know, Pastor Colton had a famous quote, uh, repeatedly he says, you know, God's method is always a man or a woman. <laughs> he always moves through people. You know, that is why you, you are very important to God. You know, your life is precious to God. You're important to God. You're God's man. You're God's woman. You know, in this hour, in this nation, you know, God wants to do something through you. You know, the scale may differ from person to person. You know, sometimes, you know, John Wesley said, you know, the whole world is my parish. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, you know, God doesn't take all of us around the world. But he has placed us somewhere and he has set us there uh, to influence for the sake of the kingdom. Now this morning, you know, um, if you read uh, Acts chapter 27, uh, let's uh, just read the first few verses there. And it says from verse 1, And when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. And embarking in a ship of Adrimitium, which was about to sail to ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends and be cared for. You know, this is a long passage. You know, it speaks about the last journey of Paul the Apostle, you know, uh, God put in his heart uh, that eventually he will stand before Caesar and he will witness about Jesus Christ. And Paul had this great vision of going to Rome. You know, he had preached the gospel to the then known world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the rest of the world and now uh, his final destination was Rome. And he wanted to go there and preach the gospel. And Paul was an itinerant evangelist. He loved to travel. He loved to go about planting churches, preaching the gospel. But here you find eventually, you know, God fulfilled the desire of his heart. But it was not the way Paul thought. You know, Paul thought maybe, you know, he will go there and he will minister freely in Rome. But how did he go? He went as a prisoner to Rome. Uh, as you know, you know, he brought all these offerings for the poor people uh, from the Gentile churches. He collected some offering for the suffering poor people in Jerusalem. He brought the money, gave it there, and then when he went to the temple, there was a riot that broke out, and then Paul got arrested there. And from there, he was transferred to a place called Caesarea, and you know that he spent about two years. And while he was there, actually, he stood before two governors. One, the first guy was named Felix. Then second one was Festus. And then King Agrippa. You know, while he was there, the case was going on. King Agrippa came to hear Paul the Apostle. So as a prisoner, you know, he was able to witness. He was able to preach the gospel to Festus. Felix, King Agrippa, and eventually after two years, you know, when the, the Jews, you know, tried to get him to, um, get him to be killed, you know, like how they got rid of Jesus, they had a plan to get rid of Paul, then immediately appealed to Caesar. You know, I appealed to Caesar, you know, that's the highest court. And then uh, they said, once you appeal to Caesar, then you have to go to Rome. So now that is the you know, background of the story. And then that's why the verse 1 begins with, and it was decided that we should sail for Italy. 
so paul was delivered to a um delivered to a roman centurion named julius you know they handed him over to him and uh, from caesarea uh, they put him in a ship and he was heading to rome uh, now you must understand that this journey was not a very uh, comfortable journey it's a dangerous journey it's a perilous journey in the sea and it will take days months and weeks uh, and before paul reached his ultimate destination so while he was going through this journey you know he faced many problems uh, they say you know you know the true metal of a man comes forth in the fires of testing you know in the fires of testing you know sometimes god sends us through fiery trials and tests you know just to test our faith in the true metal you know of a man it comes out in the difficult situations that he go through in life uh, and when it when you look at paul you know how he faced you know throughout this uh, whole journey you know the first thing was when he was going in the ship you know he had a sickness uh now in verse 4 you find verse 3 the next day we put in at we we put in at sidon and julius treated paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends and be cared for actually the word cared for here is a greek word which has connection with uh, you know medical treatment so actually while he was on this journey paul was maybe probably he was sick he was not well so the the governor the centurion there julius maybe within that 70 mile journey i don't know whether he got to know of paul or got friendly with him or some believe maybe the governor who handed him over to paul festus would have given a good report about paul that he is a innocent man he is a good man treat him well because you know now like those days you know when when a centurion loses a prisoner you know then he has to serve the punishment of the prisoner you know if the prisoner is under his care so if he lost him or if he allowed him to escape then he has to bear the punishment so julius took a big risk by giving permission for paul to go sidon where they anchored and there was a church there and in that church paul went and you know people cared for him ministered to him and then eventually their journey began again so they were going along this was not a big ship they were hopping from one port to another through the coast and they were going and then what happens uh, number one you know paul was sick and then if you read the whole chapter you know we have no time to go through it's a very interesting chapter it's a very interesting story uh, even people who want to know about how the ancient people operated in the sea there's so much of detail in this chapter you know about uh, you know the sea fair the sailing and how they operated all that even th- those who are not christians you know they they study this chapter uh, to know about how the ancient people traveled in ship and all kinds of so things so here you find paul number one he faced sickness number two while they were traveling on there was a big storm that came uh, a huge storm it was they call it the northeaster uh, or the euroclydon the the hurricane that came eventually you know it's very terrifying very fearful because these kinds of hurricanes uh, these winds can eventually destroy the ship you know that's why uh in close by you know in that area near there's a place called certis where they call it the graveyard of ships because most of the ships they they get caught to this storm or this hurricane eventually you know the the sand uh banks are there they go and bang there get smashed and all the people get killed uh so uh, paul was uh, there was a hurricane came and he, he went through that and then eventually you know when the uh, some of you if you had read this chapter you know that eventually the ship got wrecked and but some or other they managed to uh, bring it to some kind of stability but then the romans thought 
the so the prisoners might jump and escape so what they decided was that they are going to kill all the prisoners and mind you paul is one of the prisoners so here the roman soldiers they were ready to put him to death uh, and he was about to be killed but because the centurion was a kind man i don't know why maybe god's grace that he showed kindness to him uh, he said no we are not going to kill any prisoners everybody can swim and escape and get to the shore so he was sick you know he was went through this severe hurricane storm and then he was about to be killed by the soldiers then eventually somewhere they gets to the shore and then what happens you know they gather it was very cold windy so they gather all the firewood and they lit a fire then paul thought you know i also might as well help these people then he went and he started gathering some sticks and out of that a viper you know came and you know <laughs> fastened on his hand you know it uh, the bible says you know it was a poisonous snake you know it was hanging on and the people in the island they said you know this man is going to die you know uh, probably you know he is a wicked man because after escaping all these crises <laughs> all the storm in the sea eventually you know this poisonous snake has bitten him and he is going to die and they were waiting for him to fall dead because of the poison but miraculously nothing happened to paul then you know they immediately they changed their mind and uh, they started talking about maybe you know he is a kind of is connected to god or something like that and then paul began to minister to them and to preach the gospel in that city uh, in that island you know uh, island called malta where paul began to preach now what what i want to share with you this morning is you know uh, this crisis that paul went through it took about this journey took about maybe 3 4 months you know continuously you know he was going from one crisis to another you know from sickness to storm and then you know about to be killed by the soldiers and then escaping there then went to the island and a poisonous snake bit him and here mind you you know he is a man of god he is standing for god a faithful man but in the midst of a crisis a uh, uh, repeated you know again and again something coming against him but how what do you see in the apostle paul in the midst of all the crises you see the man calm courageous and confident never shaken you know the first time uh uh the when the uh, they anchored you know when the journey started they anchored in a place called um uh, fair heavens if you read verse 9 since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the f- fast was already over paul advised them saying sirs i perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss not only of the cargo and the ship but also of our lives so as i shared with you, you know they were hopping from one port to another in a small ship and then when they came to a place called uh, 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 in one of the ports uh, where they had to change ship you know the they have to transfer them to a bigger ship the roman imperial ship which transported uh, what he called grain and all that from egypt you know they have come to this uh, this port and uh, the centurion found out that it's going to italy so he transferred paul and the other prisoners all together about 276 people put all of them in that ship and uh, they were about to sail then paul gave a warning to them what is the warning he says that the voyage will be with injury and much loss not only of cargo and the ship but also of the lives but the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and the owner of the ship so the centurion you know uh, uh, he didn't want to listen to paul's advice he didn't want to take paul's advice um, we can't blame the guy maybe the experts are the ship captain and the pilot you know they of course paul had been you know before this he had already been in uh, been in three shipwrecks probably you know he also had some experience but he warned them but uh, they didn't listen to paul 
uh, and then they ventured out and then they got caught to this storm you know this big storm and you know they were there for almost 14 weeks you know they were in the sea uh, there was no sunlight you know because it was all clouded very dark um, weeks and weeks you know they were in the middle of the sea nothing was going right and uh, they thought you know our end has come you know this is the end you know we are not going to survive this you know we are all going to die you know that was uh, their thought you know they all gave up hope uh, then what happens you know that is the time you know paul again begins to speak uh, uh, now sometimes you know god brings us to a place of utter hopelessness utter helplessness and that is when you know god begins to manifest his presence and he can use you and me for the glory of god here you find that paul the apostle now i want you to understand you know sometimes we have this idea you know because i have believed god because i have trusted in god i don't need to face any problems i don't need to go through any crisis uh, you know whatever the situation you know the lord will always deliver me you know sometimes we have this idea you know sometimes god does that you know sometimes god instantaneously immediately god brings deliverance god sets us free god heals us instantly god meets the financial need in a moment immediately the miraculous happens the supernatural happens but sometimes you know god doesn't act that way sometimes you know god sends a storm you know sometimes god allows a storm to rage in your life you know some maybe because of some reason maybe sometimes you know here you know apart from paul you know like uh, you know uh, uh, when you read the story uh, it's not only paul luke was also with paul you know luke is the one who has written the book of acts so he also was traveling with paul in this journey and there was another macedonian disciple they were all going together apart from him all the others were heathens all the others you know they do not know the lord jesus christ and they were all traveling so through this storm you know god wanted to reveal his glory to these people god wanted to show his miraculous you know power and how he is able to deliver them so sometimes you know when uh, when a crisis you know like uh, the crisis that we are going through in our nation sometimes you know from one crisis to another we may go but in the midst of all that i want you to understand that god wants to use each one of you you know in a way that you will bring hope to people now in the journey that they were going on you know it came you know they eventually they had to throw all the stuff the grain the wheat everything to lighten the ship you know eventually they only cared about their life they got rid of all the belongings everything and still for all you know they thought you know this is the end you know we are not going to see the light we are not going to see the show you know we are going to die in the sea but that is the time you know the there was an angel that appeared to paul in the midst and the angel what did the angel say you know nothing will happen uh, to anybody no one is going to die out of this journey you know you all of you all are going to escape and nobody is going to be killed you know and then when paul heard that he got up and he began to encourage the people and he said i belong to the almighty god and he sent an angel and what did the angel say you know none of you are going to die you know he spoke words of hope now look at this man now he started as a prisoner in the, the the lowest ranking person in the ship you know those days you know if you go as a prisoner you know that's the lowest level you can't get beyond that uh, and he started as a, at the lowest level as a prisoner but as the journey went on ultimately at the end of the journey it was the paul the apostle who was calling all the shots 
he was the he was directing the captain he was directing the sailor he was talking to the roman centurion he said do this you know eventually as you know you know when the uh, when they were in the middle of the night dark night uh, when they were they were thinking you know they may find a show somewhere close by the sailors what happened you know they try to escape from the ship you know they thought uh, if we wait for all these 276 people even we will not be alive so what did they do they cut the life boats and they were trying to escape then paul immediately warned the centurion and all the people if these sailors escape we won't be able to get to the shore and then he encouraged everybody and he said you know now eat something you know for about 14 days nobody has not eaten anything you know they were all hungry you know they have been working but they have not been eating anything because there was total discouragement hopelessness anxiety fear but paul took time he stood up and he encouraged them and he lifted their spirits and he said you know have a meal eat and you know be strengthened because my god has spoken to me that none of you are going to perish none of you are going to die so what am i telling this morning you know for god to use you in the midst of a crisis to be a spokesman for god you don't need a title you know okay. of course they announced about my ordination you don't need ordination you don't need a title <laughs> you don't need any position you know you only need to know god you you have the spirit of god in you you are the holy spirit in you look paul his identity in the natural he was a prisoner he was going as a prisoner to rome that is the way everyone around him looked at it but what he had was he knew the living god and he knew in the midst of the crisis nobody else had the answer only he heard the voice of god only he heard what is going to happen and he was able to bring hope to all the people in the ship so this morning you know i want to i want to tell you you know you are very important to god your god's man your god's woman you know whatever the situation you know god can bring hope through you to the people out there you know like all the people who were in the ship you know they were all worshiping all kinds of gods and they were in fear but here is a man in the midst of all that there was a man who was calm courageous and confident never shaken you going from one crisis to another not at all shaken he said don't fear don't worry nothing is going to happen nobody is going to die because of this crisis nothing is good you know boy, all of you are going to be alive all of you are going to live we are going to all of us are going to get to the show you know then everybody you know when paul after announcing that when he broke bread and when he began to eat everybody in the ship they started eating you know everybody began to uh, they gain a sense of hope and a direction and then everybody began to eat so i want to encourage you this morning i want to encourage you you know don't ever think you know paul could have thought who am i you know i am a prisoner in the midst of all these people who is going to listen to me you know in the um, in this old testament story where this servant girl was in the house of name and the syrian she was a slave girl who went there as a slave but she spoke a word of hope to this man who was suffering from leprosy So this morning you know out there uh, you know you come across people with all kinds of problems or going through all kinds of crises and remember you are God's man you are God's woman and God wants to use you 
to bring hope. Amen. God wants to use you to lift the spirits of others, to encourage them, to lift them up, to speak hope and encouragement into other people's lives. You know, that is the purpose. You know, in this journey, you know, those days, this, um, this journey through the sea, you know, already Paul was, Paul had been through three shipwrecks. So he, he was not a novice when it comes to traveling on ships. Uh, regularly he went on missionary journeys. Uh, it's, uh, it's not an easy journey. It's terrible. It's very difficult, very dangerous. Uh, you know, sometimes we tend to think, you know, life is not always easy. Life is not always fair. Uh, you know, sometimes we think, you know, the moment we ac accept Christ, everything is going to be rosy. Everything is going to be nice. Uh, and, you know, we are going to go through life coasting away. But I want to tell you that is not the reality. That's not the truth. You know, sometimes life is harsh. Sometimes, you know, uh, we go through crisis. We go through difficult times. You know, Paul, writing to Timothy, Paul said, fight a good fight. You know, uh, why is telling fight a good fight? Because you are going to face challenges. You are going to face tough situations. But he said, you know, God is going to be with you. Amen. So this morning, uh, uh, we want to thank and praise God. You know, as Sanji prayed this morning, you know, I, we were having all kinds of chaos in all the petrol sheds. We can't get near, you know, for about sometimes at one point for about three weeks, you know, I forgot all about pumping petrol, everything, because it was becoming so chaotic. Uh, but then, uh, suddenly everything changed. Uh, the other day, you know, I went to pump some, yeah, for my bike, and then uh, as I went in, nobody was there. You know, he thought, you know, I was coming to pump petrol and nobody was there. Uh, but, uh, so I was so... So really, you know, people's stress levels have gone down. You know, people are beginning to relax <laughs> because there's gas and diesel and petrol. But uh, I want to tell you, uh, still for all, you know, we must bring God's presence into this nation. Amen. It is the presence of the Lord. It is the move of the Holy Spirit. It is the powerful manifestation of God's power among the heathens, you know, that will transform this land, that will change this land. You know, as, uh, uh, you know, Sanji was praying, you know, like God, uh, you know, will transform this nation. You know, people, you know, they said the highest migration that has happened is uh, this year. You know, the statistics, you know, more than 330,000 people, you know, have left the island. You know, that is the highest uh, in the history of Sri Lanka uh, because, you know, it's like, you know, people want to escape from a sinking ship. Uh, but I want to tell you, you know, God is not finished with this nation. Amen. You know, when there's utter hopelessness, when everything is gone, when uh, people think, you know, everything is finished, everything is all over. You know, initially when first Paul said, you know, that there's going to be a storm, don't venture into the middle of the sea, don't go, you know, they didn't listen to Paul. They listened to the experts. But the second time after going through the storm, when Paul spoke, everybody listened. Everybody was listening to his advice. And this time around, I believe, you know, the nation will hear the voice of the church. Amen. The nation will hear the voice of God. And we are going to see this nation blessed by God, transformed by God. And the Lord will glorify his name in this land. Amen. So, uh, in the Bible, I want to finish with this. There are many examples. You know, we are because of one man, God blessed. Because of one man, Joseph. God blessed the nation of Egypt and God gave the answers to the famine and the problem. And because of one man, Jacob, you know, God blessed the household of Laban. You know, when Jacob was about to leave, uh, Laban said, 
you know god has blessed me is because of you because you, you are here god has prospered me um, you know like that you can find many stories in the bible and i believe because of you god is going to bless this land because of you god is going to bless your company where you are working because of you god is going to prosper and bless your business or whatever that you are attached to god is going to bring blessing because you are there amen because, because in the midst of all because paul was there in the midst of this crisis he made a difference amen and you are going to make a difference so this morning i want to encourage you will you be that man will you be that woman you know uh, in the ship most probably in the midst of all this storm and crisis everybody would have spoken negatively you know something you know i don't know why we even some would have said you know we should have listened to this man uh, we didn't get his advice because we didn't listen to him we are in this crisis now uh, like you know we are talking about you know we should have gone to the imf you know you all didn't listen to us you know that's why we are in this problem you know people would have said you know you should have listened to paul first you didn't listen to his advice that's why we are in the crisis now all kinds of negative things the ship about 276 people would have spoken but in the midst of all that paul had a word of hope paul had a word of faith an encouragement amen so this morning you know that is what god is calling you to do remember when you walk out of this place this morning always remember always talk to yourself and always tell you are god's man you are god's woman you are god's representative the holy spirit is in you you can make a difference wherever you are amen you can bring god's presence you can bring god's blessing you can bring release god's wisdom in that place while you are seated in the board room or whatever god can bring his wisdom through you in that place you are that man you are that woman you know and god wants to flow through you amen and god wants to work through you so shall we surrender ourselves to the lord and lord said lord i am going to trust you i am going to believe you lord whatever the situation that i go through i thank you that you are going to use me you are going to use me for your glory father hallelujah thank you lord shall we rise to our feet this morning hallelujah thank you jesus you know i believe the holy spirit is calling you this morning you are not part of the problem you are part of the answer god says you know i have set up set you there i have placed you there not to be a problem but to be an answer i have placed you there so that you know you will be my mouthpiece you will be my spokesman you will be my man or woman in this season of crisis and you will bring hope to others so will you surrender to the lord will you yield yourself to god and say lord i am offering myself to you I'm surrendering myself to you. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Ha ba ra ba shikiri la ba la ba la ba. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Worship you Lord. Glorify your name. Praise your name Father. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord.